La conferencia se llama Developing Simple Solution for Complex Problem with IoT. Un aplauso, por favor. <laughs> so, good afternoon, uh, everybody. So, I'll be presenting in English. So, apologies for my Spanish. So, <laughs> so uh, again. I'm from Bosch and today I'll be talking about the Internet of Things, IoT. So to begin with, I'd like to tell a few stories. So this is uh, Barcelona in uh, 1960s. So uh, in the 1960s, there was a huge outbreak of uh, asthma. It uh, suddenly triggered in the middle of uh, the season. Uh, people didn't know how it happened, but asthma flared up. There were a lot of uh, casualties. Uh, so regulators uh, typically jumped on the standard uh, problems that are uh, related to pollution, uh, traffic and industries and so on and so forth. But still the problem was not solved. Uh, they still tried to uh, find out what is going on, but uh, the asthma kept continuing. Finally, they decided to put some good minds uh, into this problem. They caught hold of a few doctors, a few researchers, and they started studying the problem. And uh, while they studied, uh, they started looking at all the events that were happening during that time. And so finally, they realized that in the port of Barcelona, at uh, specific uh, times of the year, there were ships which were coming in from uh, different uh, places and they were offloading soya beans. So the soya beans when they were offloaded uh, onto the uh, docks, there was a dust storm which was created because of the dust from the soya beans. And because of the air, it went all the way inland and that triggered the asthma. It took uh, close to 20 uh, researchers and a team of uh, doctors and six years to solve this problem and the problem was solved in one day they just put a filter when the soya bean was being offloaded and all the dust settled down and it didn't come into the inland so the problem was solved six years to find the root cause and one day to solve the problem so we'll go to another story. This one is in uh, West Virginia, the coal mines of West Virginia. Again, back in the uh, uh, early uh, 20th century. So people started getting sick very often. There was a lot of deaths, close to 200 uh, to 500 uh, deaths very regularly. And uh, people attributed it to hard work, a lot of work. Then they started uh, seeing that the death toll was increasing. And when they started uh, analyzing the deaths, they saw that uh, the lungs of these miners had started to become black, which became uh, popularly known as the black lung disease. So again, a team was uh, formed uh, to research the whole thing and then they saw that the whole process of mining was becoming very advanced. They were using uh, sophisticated tools to extract the, uh, the ore from the mines. And because of these uh, sophisticated tools, the dust particles were becoming finer and finer, smaller and smaller. And this was easily taken into the lungs of the miners and that started to kill them. So silicosis, uh, pneumoconosis is uh, one of the big reasons and again uh, the government stepped in they installed a rule that uh, miners should wear a certain amount of uh, uh, air guards masks basically and then they put controls on the machines as well and then subsequently the fatalities dropped by 90 percent the number of deaths decreased by 90 percent Again here, it took close to 20 years to make the rules. 
or to find the problem and uh, around the two years for the committee to form the rules that change uh, the fatalities uh, dramatically downwards. Let's switch to a problem which is uh, more uh, prevalent in your day-to-day uh, -day lives. So you go to your supermarket. So when you go to the supermarket, you see that there's a lot of food on the shelves. So you see food. But the companies which put these on the shelves, for them it is money sitting idle. The money is not coming into their pockets because nobody has bought them yet. So the more the time the snacks are on the shelf, that much more time is when the money doesn't come into the company. Right? So again another problem that needs to be solved. <coughs> so accident and this is a very uh, dramatic uh, picture but uh, the whole point is that uh, just take an example uh, that you are driving uh, in a very remote area and uh, you see that uh, uh, you suddenly have a problem, you have an accident, you uh, avoided a deer and you went and hit a tree. Now the question is uh, how much time do you take to inform somebody or for help to come to you, right? So from the time of the accident to the time that there is a response to the accident again a lot of time is lost and this time is critical especially when you have a very strong uh, injury because of the accident. Another uh, story, uh, many of you take uh, medicines or many of you take uh, injections because of some uh, illness. How do you know if the medicine is okay? The medicine is manufactured in one place and it travels and comes to your uh, uh, local uh, pharmacy and then you buy it and then you use it. There's a lot of time which has passed from the time it was manufactured. And medicines have to be uh, kept under a certain temperature control. How do you know that the medicine has not uh, taken a high temperature because a truck which was carrying it forgot to switch on the uh, refrigeration? So. It's very harmful if the medicine has uh, heated up and then it cooled back again. But you'll never know because you have started using it. So this is another problem which is uh, very uh, no, critical. And these are the areas which cause a lot of uh, harm. And this is a very common problem. This is actually uh, Mexico City. Uh, <laughs> So as you can see there is pollution. So uh, once the pollution has happened, it's a very hard problem to solve because it's already polluted. Uh, so the question is, uh, do you take steps to clean the pollution or do you take steps to prevent the pollution? Correct? So how do you actually solve the original problem and not fix the after effects? Right, so this is a very important uh, topic to look at. So this is another uh, interesting area. I am sure all of you are uh, having a lot of uh, gadgets. Uh, this is about uh, security. The Google Nest can tell you or will know if you are in the house. Because it has proximity sensors and it can tell you if uh, you are in the house or if you are not in the house. Amazon Echo sits on your kitchen counter, you can talk to it and it can understand what uh, you want and it will give you some answers. It's like uh, Siri. So it knows uh, what your uh, requirements are, what you are cooking, what you are talking and it has a direct connection uh, back to the cloud. Jabra is an earphone. Uh, it has built-in uh, heart uh, pulse uh, sensors. So it can sense your uh, uh, pulses, it can sense your uh, nervousness, whether you are stressed, whether you are happy and what time of the day are you happy, things like that. Sleep IQ is a mattress which can tell you 
uh, whether you have uh, uh, what kind of sleep you are having it will tell you how many times you have moved in the bed or it can tell you whether uh, you have uh, a good sleep or a bad sleep it can pretty much tell you what you are doing in the bed right and toto is the best it's a japanese uh, intelligent commode you know? intelligent bathroom i can say it can tell you if you had too much to drink the previous night <laughs> it can monitor your uh, bowel movements and pretty much it can tell you what you ate uh, no and how much you ate because it is monitoring the other side na no? <laughs> so all this information is going to the respective companies so they pretty much can tell what is going on in your life so there is really no privacy they know every small detail of your entire uh, life so the safety and the security of your life is pretty much available for everybody to share okay <clears throat> so in summary looking at all the stories the biggest issue that we are talking about here is time correct so we talked about uh, pollution time we talked about the accident uh, response that's time so we talked about uh, the uh, asthma cases you know 6 uh, years time we looked at uh, the areas uh, which were related to the miners 20 years time so the fundamental principle we are looking at is that a problem which was very small on the day it occurred because of the time that was spent ignoring it or because you didn't know what was going on it started to become a giant snowball it's called as the snowball effect no so the problem has become bigger and bigger but originally it was just a small problem you can uh, say it in uh, you know your everyday life and the cost of fixing it starts to increase it's like uh, if you are not well if you don't go to the doctor immediately and you allow it to fester then the problem becomes bigger and bigger and then when you go to the doctor your bills become bigger and bigger right so the question of time and cost is uh, you know very important but today we have uh, technology all the problems that are out there are things which can be looked at but at bosch we are not looking at how to take technology and make beautiful devices right so if you take the internet of things everybody talks about what can you do with iot can i make a, a bread toaster send me an sms as soon as the toast is completed brilliant technology uh, thing but does it solve any problem no so iot is not about technology or connectivity or hardware or software it is how you solve the problem and at bosch we feel that the iot is just an enabler it is not the solution it is just one of the tools you use to solve the problem so having said that we'll look at what are we uh, having at uh, bosch what are we doing about it at uh, bosch uh, for the internet of things so iot for us at bosch stands for efficiency growth and flexibility so if you take any uh, topic uh, be it uh, a store or if be it a machine the more you uh, make savings more you spend less the more profits you earn so it's very important to look at how can i increase the output of a manufacturing plant or of my packaging uh, machine or uh, consumer output and how can i reduce the cost which is going into making it so that my profitability is much better and growth how can i use iot to expand my market share how can i use it to develop new business models and how can i convert my fixed cost into variable cost so if you look at the earlier days 
if you wanted uh, memory, you used to start by terabytes of uh, data. You used to build your own servers. But today, you can subscribe to an organization and take memory on rent. And if you don't want it, you can stop paying it. So you're converting a fixed cost into a variable cost. <coughs> so likewise, uh, in the manufacturing space, there's a big move towards creating a lot of uh, improvement in uh, productivity. So our CEO says that uh, by connecting the, uh, all our processes in the industry, we can save up to 30% of uh, manufacturing. So if you take the plants, number of plants that we have, the costs are significant. And so you will have incredible uh, costs that will come up. So, so if you look at uh, a beer bottle, the neck of the bottle is a very big R&D topic. Companies spend millions to get the best design for their beer bottle and therefore the bottlenecks of a beer bottle is extremely sexy for the designer but a bottleneck in a factory is a big headache so what we call as bottlenecks for example you take a machine you make a beautiful machine which can make a million products every hour but at the end of the machine, there is one person who is taking the boxes and uh, put, uh, taking the products and putting it into a box. So that person becomes a bottleneck. So despite the whole machine being superlative and extraordinary, you are making the whole exercise a uh, disaster by introducing a bottleneck. Similarly, you can have your supplier who is very fast, who has got the best uh, trucks and it brings materials to your doorstep extremely fast. But my process of taking that materials inside and converting it into products is very slow. So again, a bottleneck. So the benefits are lost if you take it in pieces. So it's very important to have an end-to-end -end approach. So you have to start from one end to another end and ensure that IoT is brought in to clear the bottlenecks first. The first thing that is required to do is to look at a study of the entire process and clear the bottlenecks. So similarly we have uh, implemented it in a Bosch plant called Bleishak where uh, 5000 systems are connected and there is absolutely no bottlenecks and there is free flow of goods and uh, information. And we talked about the privacy where we had uh, Toto and uh, Amazon Echo. So at the Bosch, we have uh, introduced Bezer, a middleware, which looks at personalization and uh, uh, privacy uh, aspects. And you can ensure that the data that you want to keep it to yourself can be kept to yourself. And only the data that needs to go to your and uh, uh, customer can be shared so you can segregate the data and this makes uh, privacy very useful makes all your products extremely uh, safe to use uh, without having to disclose how you sleep how you, you know go to the potty likewise if you take brakes uh, all of you will have uh, vehicles uh, how do you know whether your brakes are okay most of the time you realize that your brakes are bad when you real when you stop when you are unable to stop your car and then you skid and uh, hit somebody so what we have done is we have introduced analytics inside the brakes which monitors the usage of your brakes and can tell you before the problem happens that your brakes are going to fail your brakes are worn out and therefore you have to go to the service station and get them replaced so this is in runtime. So as you're driving, it monitors and it's runtime analytics on the edge. And this makes the brake index and you get your information on your phone, which tells you that, okay, it's time for you to change your brake pads. And that makes it very safe. 
<coughs> so it's a football crazy uh, country so how do you increase football viewership so bosch has been instrumental in uh, increasing the amount of uh, football viewership by introducing a uh, automatic lawn mower so the the boys and the men can sit and watch tv and the lawn mower can cut the grass so it is a perfect example of uh, the internet of things so using your phone you can tell the lawn mower to wake up on a monday cut the grass go to sleep wake up on a wednesday trim the grass go to sleep and the mower is so intelligent that uh, once the battery drains out it can find its way back to the charger charges itself and then go back goes back and cuts the lawn so you don't have to miss that uh, that all elusive uh, goal by uh, no, lionel messi maybe so so this is an example of uh, time again you're saving time you're saving the effort and you're improving the productivity of your lawn mowing experience so bosch is a things company it's been always a product organization it has been building products for the last uh, 130 years and uh, now it's moving from being a things company into a solutions organization where you're getting the entire spectrum of the internet of things so you have so we talked about that uh, car crash in one of the earlier slides where you are driving remotely and you have a accident so this product called as the ecall can fit into your cigarette lighter and when you have a car crash it automatically transmits your location and the extent of your crash to the emergency response team so you don't have to call anybody maybe you are not in a position to call anybody you might have uh, you know hit your head or something but this device will call the emergency response and transmit the location and the extent of uh, the crash and you'll have a emergency response team come and find you so you can look at uh, the transport data logger so when you are shipping uh, a medicine equipment we talked about the medicines you take uh, this and put it on the medicine uh, package and it will monitor the temperature the pressure and also any vibrations of the package from point a to point b and when it comes to the point b location the person who is receiving it can read it out and see if the temperature has gone down or has gone up and whether the medicines have crossed the threshold of temperature and if it has crossed he can throw away the entire batch and therefore save uh, many lives so this is a transport data logger can be used for many things it can be used for ice cream for example so ice cream as you know if it becomes hot it melts but when it comes to your house it might be again cold so it becomes you know uh, strong again but during that time when it was hot it might encourage bacteria to be formed right so it's very critical that when you come to the end of the journey you are looking at the log from the tdl unit and then you have a decision to be made which can tell you whether it is good or bad similarly if you have uh, sensitive uh, equipment like glass or you have uh, antique uh, units and uh, the transporter has uh, mishandled the luggage the package maybe is dropped it and something has uh, broken so the transport data logger can tell you if the package has undergone serious stress and then you can claim insurance because it was the transporter's fault and you know where it happened and you know how it happened and the extent of uh, damage so you have lot of applications and all this is because of the usage of iot to get this uh, done so similarly you have uh, for uh, railway cars uh, bigger containers and so on and so forth so the bosch uh, a suite allows you to read sensors create rules as you as we discussed uh, now rules on whether to uh, 
uh, capture the data when an event happens or to record or transmit uh, so we can create all the rules and then also you can create some sort of visualization how do you want the item to be visualized <coughs> so the bosch uh, iot so as i mentioned bosch is a one of the very few organizations that makes products that makes the drivers that talk to these products that does the uh, middleware that talks uh, and does some uh, basic uh, information and then also does all the applications that convert it into uh, industry required uh, solutions so the entire ecosystem exists at bosch uh, to be able to deliver uh, complete uh, iot uh, solutions so that's a uh, brief on uh, iot at bosch so if you have any questions i'll be happy to take them now yeah Okay. Si tienen alguna pregunta, por favor levante la mano y enseguida vamos y les pasamos el micrófono. ¿Tienen preguntas? No questions. Creo que no, ¿verdad? Okay. <laughs> All right. Bueno, para despedirnos, Uday, muchísimas gracias por haber estado aquí en Campus Party, te lo agradecemos. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Un aplauso, yeah. por favor. Thank you.